You wrote about the Wizard of Oz this morning, right? We got a behind the curtain um, question here. It says, thank you for being specific on your GDP estimates and process in the early look this morning. Um, can you explain how you manage the discussion or debate internally when there's disagreement on an issue or a forecast or what have you? It's a good question. Great question, I guess they'd say on a conference call. You know, it's earnings season. Great question. Great question. Uh, you know, uh, of course we disagree. Um, we don't disagree on the model. We disagree on the... On, so, for example, and thank you for the compliment, I do think that it matters that we've been within, literally within 20 to 30 basis points of getting the last five quarters of GDP right. I don't know anybody who's done that, and I'm not going to apologize for it. I think that's why you pay us. Again, uh, five quarters, why do I use five quarters? Because in the last five quarters, you go back to Q1 of 2014, you would have had to get this part of GDP right, because GDP went up in the first half of last year, and the turn and the down move, so the last three quarters. And again, that's, that's why I think people use our model, because it's accurate. It's accurate. It's not, you know, maybe sometimes I should just publish the model and not say anything, and then people can't say, well, you're being mean, or you're doing this to me, or whatever. Whatever, you know? The thing is yeah, accurate, okay? Um, but when we have, uh, you know, so what I was going to say about that is that there's very little debate on the 0.3% predictive tracking algorithm number that we've been tracking to for GDP for Q2. Very little to no debate, really, because the model's been accurate. There's no reason to change it. Um, and again, that's just based on math, okay? So again, we're constantly flushing new data into the model. It makes it very, it makes it susceptible almost to no debate. Where you can, and that's a quantitative um, exercise. Uh, a qualitative exercise, like Darius and I, back and forth, you know, meeting to meeting in Greenwich and Rowayton yesterday, Connecticut. Um, you know, we'll in between meetings have a lot of questions. It's, it's not a debate in as much as it is a question, which is, of course, you know, questioning the premise is always a debate, so it's maybe the same thing. And, and of course we disagree on things. I mean, one, um, one simple example is that I think that Janet Yellen is in a box and can't go to QE4 before the election. You know, you have six months for her to go to QE4. I don't think she can do that. Darius thinks that she can. So, again, we'll debate each other on that. I mean, it's, I don't know what the answer is, obviously, but I'm not going to... Again, at this juncture, I'm not going to change my mind because Darius disagrees with me. I mean, I don't think that it's in play yet. I think because Dar Darius would be the first to admit that you know QE4 is not in play until the stock market goes back into crash mode anyway, right? So we're going to have that debate if we become more and more right again. Uh, again, just going back to being the trend right that we've been on bond yields and, and markets, not not going back to all time highs. I mean, this is where we're going to start to really debate. Okay, is Darius right or is Keith right? And the way that I kind of think about probabilities on being right or wrong, I mean, I, I do think, and I agree with this, actually, this book, um, I brought it in today, um, this book called, um, I, sorry, I take the covers off because my kids, like, rip the covers. Um, but, you know, so I'm, you know, I read books, obviously, I, I dog, dog ear every single page that has something that's interesting. So this morning's early look note obviously has the quote that I dog eared. But this book called Super Forecasting, Super Forecasting by Phil Tetlock. Again, very good book. <clears throat> Yeah, he's a big proponent of using man and machine, okay? I am not the man. I'm a man who has a machine. We are men and women who have a machine. We use that and we talk to the machines and we talk to the angels and everything else. There's a quantitative and qualitative component to this. The other way around, again, we're, humans are qualitative, machines are quantitative. And again, we're trying to get to the best answer we can. But when we do, we talk in probability speak. So when I talk to Derek, when I, the way I think about it, I was trying to think about this um, yesterday when I was reading this book, because Tetlock's a big proponent of uh, being specific with the probability, and he uses uh, Leon Panetta and how he, um, how he thought about WMD, like weapons of mass destruction, and the probability of having them. So somebody comes out and says it's 100%, and somebody says, well, it's 60-40. You know, that's pretty loose for me. I mean, Tetlock likes those kinds of numbers, that's a little too loose for me, Phil. I, I want to get more specific. So I tend to deal with things, again, in thirds of probability. So for me, it's a yes or no answer when I have a position. Is it probable or is it not probable? So in other words, is it a third or less or is it two thirds or more? I would never take a position in anything. I wouldn't. I have before, never again. I would never take a position. I've never, you can ask my wife. I don't buy lottery tickets. I don't, I'm not, you know, I don't do that. I would never take a position unless I think my odds are two thirds or better. To be great in this business, if you hold that average or better, you're gonna be fantastic, by the way. Great, greatly fantastic. If I think that something is a third or less, I won't, I, of course, I, you know, probable, I'll either be looking for a short position or I'll just you know, not agree with somebody and then we can debate it. So that's actually, it's a pretty good way to, to kind of consider, I think, Darius thinks that it's two thirds probable that, that we could have QE4. 
And I think it's improbable. One, you know, I think that there's a third, maybe a third of a chance of that. Um, and again, okay, well, what's a third? Well, let's separate that in thirds. Is it 11%, 22%, or 33%? And what are the three factors, the three biggest factors that tell me that it's improbable saying it's 33% or less? So again, I like to break it down, look at the big factors, not, not, not meander and talk about every factor. This is when you run into a problem like I'm running into as I speak because I keep talking. You know, you can keep talking. I can just keep talking. I mean, I don't have a boss. We could keep talking until tomorrow. I mean, I'd, I'd be perfect for the government. I'd be the best filibuster in world history. I mean, you can just keep talking about all these different factors. But if you don't identify the most important factors, you're really not talking about anything. And, and again, it takes a, an extreme level of arrogance to assume that you actually know what the dominant factors are until you have a machine at least tell you or suggest what those factors could be. So again, long-winded answer to a question. The answer to the question is absolutely yes, we disagree, but we do have a probability-based uh, framework to start to have a debate about, uh, about those debates.